Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be looking at again Power Query and if you watched our previous video then the screen we have at the moment will look very similar. Uh, in that video we uh, looked at a solution for being able to combine every single one of the files within a given folder. This time we're going to look at the scenario where you only want to bring the latest file through to your report. So in our scenario you can see we've got three files here and each file is dated at the end of a calendar month. So at the moment we've got the 30th of November, the 31st of December and then also the 31st of January. And if you're not familiar with this uh, file naming convention, basically you can just see they've all got the same name of snapshot. And at the end, you can see that you've got the calendar uh, in a number format. So 2021 is the year, 11 being the month, and 30 being the day for the first one, and then so on and so forth. This just gives the, the ability to obviously orga, organize our files um, in the in the date format that they appeared basically. So what we'll do is we'll jump into Excel and go get straight to it. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our data tab. And from here, we're going to go to the get data option and simply just launch Power Query Editor. From here, this bit will seem very uh, similar again, like I say to the last video, but bear with, and this will serve as a good recap uh, if you can't remember how we got the file contents. All we're going to do is right click, go to new query, other sources and then enter a blank query. And I'm simply gonna type into here equals folder.files uh, because we want to be getting this information from a folder. Uh, so again, for clarity, I'm just getting stuff from a folder that appears on OneDrive. Uh, obviously, if you're pulling from other sources like SharePoint or, or any other particular scenario, obviously this particular step is gonna be different as you connect to your source, but the following steps in terms of how we sort the data uh, are gonna be exactly the same across platform or applications, so I say. Uh, I'm just gonna cheat and copy my folder path across because I've got it on the screen to the side here. And upon doing this, we'll get rid of the error message you now see on the screen. So let's paste that into there. Hit enter and you can now see our three files and yeah, perfectly in the order that we just looked at them. So what we want to do is the first part of this is we want to understand what or find, shall I say, the latest file in this um, group of files. So in order to do that, and this is where our naming convention really comes into play, because we've named all of these using this similar number format, it gives us this ability to obviously organize our files in the calendar order they appear. So obviously by creating this number from year, month and day, it gives us a, a reference, shall we say, that's obviously continually going to grow. So the latest file is going to be the one with the greatest or the largest number is one way to put it. So in order to do that, we can first bring our latest file to the top of the list. So to do that, all I'm going to do is go to the name column, select the drop down and then I'm gonna to go to sort descending. So the second option of the top up here and hit that. And you can see it's just now flipped the order in that we had it. Originally it was ascending by default and now we've, we've put it into descending as you can see at the top here. So that's brought it to the top so we know what to do with. The next thing we want to do is we want to basically disregard and get rid of all those other files. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use this great uh, function called keep rows. Uh, so all we need to do, if we're in the Home tab, is you'll see there's this option for Keep Rows. Just going to do the drop down, and you can see we've got a number of options available to us. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this scenario is just go to Keep Top Rows. And for us, we only want the, the single latest file. So we're going to go Keep One Row. And when we refer to rows, we're not talking about the content within the file. We're simply talking about the rows that you see here. So the rows of information within in our folder path. So if we do number of rows one and hit OK, you can see that everything else has been filtered out so that we can only see our latest file that we're obviously wanting to use. So the next part then is to absorb the information in that file. And to do so, again, I'm going to follow this, the same step we used in a previous video where we're going to combine all of the available files you see or all of the visual files you see at the moment. Obviously, it's only going to be one file, but it's just a way of uh, achieving uh, the import of this without having to specific, 
specifically define this name um, as what we want. Uh, obviously, well, not obviously maybe, but we can we could just import this file now. But what that will do, and probably to explain my waffle just then, is it will capture the name and the exact folder path or file path, should I say, for this file. That will work in this scenario, but as we go through our example and we look at entering new files to this, obviously it's going to continually pick up this file. We don't want that. We want this solution to be completely dynamic, so as new files come in, it's always going to pick up the latest one. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on our applied steps and I'm going to go into insert step after. And you can see it's created this custom step for us. If I just navigate between the equals and before the hashtag, we could delete that, keep first rows, but it just helps rather than having to try and type that again. Uh, again, for clarity, keep first rows is all it's doing is it's referring to our previous step, which is keep first rows. So it's going to sort of, uh, we're now going to tell or create a function uh, which is going to apply logic to that, the data set at that point. What we're going to do here is going to type in binary. And as soon as we do full stop, you'll see we've got the options available to us. I just want to go down to the combine option and I'm just going to do tab to select that. I'll do an open curve bracket and then go all the way to the end of this keep first row step. And in square brackets, I'm just going to enter the word content because we want to get the content, uh, all content available, which is obviously the files content. One last uh, curve bracket and hit enter. And you can see it's now pulled that data through for us. So if we wanted to, we can now go um, close and load and obviously that information will be loaded to the file for us but if you've seen our other videos before you're more than familiar on how to do that and you can of course check those videos out if you want to understand how to do the close and load and add it to the file but for us we now just want to make sure that this uh, solution is robust for new files being added so in order to test that what we're going to do is if I just open up our folder view we've got at the moment here so we can still see that we have the three files available to us um, in the snapshots folder. If I was just to go and get uh, a copy of a new file, so we're going to paste in here one from uh, February. So we can now see we've got yet yeah, 2022, February being obviously the second month, and then the 28th, so the last day of the month. So we've now added a new file to this folder. So what will happen is if we now come over to uh, we'll go back into Power Query in the background here. I'm just going to click this refresh button at the top here because it will then rerun this query. And what it should do is pick up the new file um, in our folder, obviously, and then go through those steps of putting it to the top, excluding the others, and then only presenting the data within that file. So if we now push refresh preview, if I, if I clicked it, uh, you can see that the uh, content has now been updated. And we've been able to validate that because this uh, field of file day is actually contained within the file. Uh, using these values, if you want to be specific, you might have seen that they didn't change. It's simply because I was quite lazy and just took a copy of the, uh, the January file and just changed the date to give us a reference point. So we can see that that has worked. If we want to reverse that, and let's say we now go and remove this February file, like so, so we can see there is only those three files now there. And once again, refresh, you can see how obviously now the January file has regained that position as the latest file. So this is a great solution if, um, unlike previous videos, we don't want to pull all the information in, we only want to pull the latest uh, available file into our report. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help the all important YouTube algorithm. And if this is your first time checking out the channel or you've watched our videos before, for, please can you consider subscribing to the channel and also hitting that bell notification button that way you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out in the future so once again thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video